Tetris has been an addictive game for a long time now. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a knockoff called Hextras and turn it into a progressive web application. Hey guys, Chris Love, the owner of Love to Dev, and today we're going over the Hextras progressive web app that I recently launched. And uh, basically I was looking around for a Tetris uh, application I could fork and make a progressive web app, but I couldn't quite find one. But I found this one uh, kind of in the genre of Tetris, and I thought it was a lot of fun and very easy to port over. Now, the gameplay itself is very basic. On a phone, you just tap it on the right and left side of the screen on a desktop. You just hit the right and left arrow keys to rotate the center hexagon, and you try to match the colors up. You want to get try to three touching each other to clear them off. And uh, the gameplay is pretty fun. It gets a little faster as the game progresses. So eventually you're going to um, run out of space, basically, and the game will you'll lose at that point. But So the goal is try to get as many points as possible. And you can see I've got up to uh, a little over 2,000 points. It uh, looks like my high score so far on the on the phone. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. If you open it up on, with Chrome for Android, you should get prompted for the Add to Home screen. Uh, you can also add it to your desktop on Windows, and I assume the same on Mac OS using Chrome as well. So this is a fun little game. And now we're going to go look at the source code and see how I upgraded it. Hey, guys. I hope you've had a little fun playing with Extras by this point. And now I just want to walk through how the code was added to make uh, the game a progressive web app. Now again, this is a, a fork of an existing GitHub repository, and uh, I thought it was a fun little game. Uh, what uh, I did have to do is uh, scrape out some Bitcoin mining malware, uh, the Coinbase code, and a few other little things like that uh, to kind of clean up the code to make it something I would feel comfortable working with. But uh, anyway, let's get into the progressive web application feature set to this. And I just want to point out that I am forking existing projects. I'm not trying to, at this point at least, upgrade their code. Uh, this uh, particular application, while the game works perfectly fine, the code is not structured uh, or kind of up to my level of uh, exp expectations of code. So don't, uh, please don't judge the code itself uh, on me. Uh, but uh, it did meet my number one criteria is it didn't use a fast food framework. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we uh, are including a reference to the web manifest file, which we'll look at here in a moment. Uh, Going to have a simple viewport to make it somewhat responsive. And then they already had all the uh, open graph and Twitter card stuff, so I left it in here. Uh, this is a good practice for any public website uh, to add all this. Uh, I do need to make some content on all of these things because it's quite extensive these days. And as always, make sure you have a fab icon reference uh, as a good practice. And if you are interested, you can look up the fab icon article on my blog about that and web performance. Alrighty, so let's just scroll back down to the bottom here. And do, do, do. all right. Uh, Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so um, I did add the uh, service worker registration code to this initialization JS file. That's because it's kind of uh, normally in my applications I put a, like a I call it a bootstrap uh, piece of JavaScript. It's not related to the CSS framework. It's just because it essentially boots the application, and that's what they're doing here. They're, they call it initialization. So I used that particular file to add my uh, service worker registration code down here at the bottom. And if you've looked at any of the other videos on some of the other progressive web apps I've been launching lately, uh, it's the same exact code right here. Just simple service worker registration. That's because this is a very simple application and doesn't need a whole lot of uh, loving, so to speak. Now, if we go to the service worker file, again, the entire application is a single page and just has uh, assets that need to get loaded. And I'm going to pre-cache every single asset for the entire application. Now the application will run out of local cache rather than hitting the server, which means A, it works offline, or no matter what the network condition is, and will and should load basically instantly. Um, now, it's not going to be like a zero millisecond thing. I mean, there's going to be uh, probably a 
10 to 30 second millisecond delay, so probably no more than two frame refreshes uh, before uh, something is visible on the screen. Um, and now, depending on the phone, or device, whatever it may be, four or five frame refreshes, don't, don't knock me for that. And um, what I did was I just scraped out all of the CSS, JavaScript image references that I could find in the code. And it, uh, it uses some PNGs for the open graph pieces, but it, uh, it leans heavily on SVGs. Now, personally, I have not really used a lot of SVGs in my application simply because um, I'm not really good at editing them. I haven't really played with the editing tools, but I do like seeing the fact that there, a lot of these games in particular are using SVGs. And maybe that's another reason I don't do a lot of game development, like zero game development. <laughs> so, um, but if you're not familiar, uh, SVG is a scalable vector graphic, and it's just a lot of XML. And the nice thing about them is that they scale nicely, so you don't have to worry about creating an image array, which is what we do with the responsive images. And so that's pretty cool. And it makes the graphics on the screen. Now the game leverages Canvas to actually for to do the gameplay itself, which is what you really should do for most of these games is uh, utilize uh, a Canvas because it, it's really designed well for for these kind of games in particular. Um, so, all right. Now all of this will be pre-cached. And uh, if you noticed up above, I have a named uh, set of variable for the, the pre-cache name. And then we just add that array right there. And the, uh, the cache at all function will go out, retrieve all those assets, and put those into cache for us. And that's honestly all you got to do. The fetch event handler is probably the simplest uh, pattern at all for all the, uh, the caching patterns. And that is... Uh, uh, cache first with the network fallback. So it's going to look for the request in cache. If not, it's going to try to retrieve it from the network and return that response. So that's that's really all there is to this uh, as far as that goes. Now if we go to the web manifest file, uh, I've got the name here, just a Hextras PWA. Uh, the short name, which will be displayed below the icon on the home screens, is just Hextras. I've got a large array of icons. I did run this through the uh, PWA Builder image generator, and it gives me, uh, it created all the icons for me and the JSON that I dropped into here. And I like to put all of these icons under a meta folder. The image generator automatically uh, organized them by platform for me. But I do like to just put them under here because um, it keeps them out of the images folder, which I to me, I feel like that should be the application images, not um, kind of the, what, uh, this uh, extra ceremonial uh, type stuff that's not about the actual application interf interactions. The start URL should be the home page. Uh, didn't add a scope to this one, just, it really is no big deal. Uh, again, I like the standalone, which means we don't have any uh, browser Chrome, uh, you know, uh, like the address bar, et cetera, things like that. That way it looks just like a native application. And again, you want to make sure you have the background and theme colors that match up and uh, and everything. And that's that's really all there is to upgrading something like this to be a progressive web app. It's, it, you know, honestly, it didn't the, the biggest problem I had was just kind of scraping out some of the, the, the malware kind of code and some other things like that from the application and just updating like uh, the uh, the open graph Twitter card stuff to reference uh, my stuff from their stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, I did I spent more time on those kind of things than I did on the actual code upgrade. And as always, uh, feel free to clone or fork uh, the repository that I have. It's free for you to use and reference. Um, and if you've got simple websites or web applications, this can serve as a simple blueprint to get those up to a progressive web app and give you a good starting foundation. Now, of course, if you have a more complex application, which uh, I imagine most of us do, um, I do highly recommend my Progressive Web App course, Progressive Web App from Beginner to Expert. And there is a link in the description below so that you can save $171 off the regular $200 price and get it for $29. Right now, there's over 21 hours of video, and I've got more slated to add in the coming days. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things that need to get updated. The browsers are constantly upgrading their developer tools, things like that. I've got more 
like uh, technical content I need to add to it. So it's going to be a living course, so don't uh, feel like the 21 hours is all it's going to ever be. Uh, it's going to be a living course, and I'll be updating it uh, every so often to kind of keep up with what's going on. So um, anyway, that's all there is to it. This is a fun game. Uh, I am starting to get addicted to it. My wife likes it. Uh, hopefully you do too. I would think this is a good find out there and a good simple demonstration of Upgrading any website to uh, at least a minimal level progressive web app is something you can use. So as always, if you like the game, feel free to share it with your friends. Uh, clone the code, like I said. Uh, subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot of other progressive web apps that will be launching. And of course, a lot of other um, resources and tips around progressive web application and just web application development in general. So you don't want to miss any of that and make sure you're, you're there and alerted whenever that happens. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys.